What's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you guys another Forex educational video. Today's topic was requested by a number of people, something that is extremely important to trading, and that is going to be managing an open trade. Essentially what this topic is going to cover, once you have a trade, you have a stop, you have a target, you have a plan, you've executed the trade, and you are now live in the trade, this is going over proper practices and how professionals manage trades that are open. Now this can be done in a number of different ways and a number of different strategies have different management trading techniques. However, I will go over how these um, techniques and strategies can be applied, why they're important, and really just how to go about the approach for doing this. So first and foremost, with managing an open trade, we want to and need to ensure that all actions taken once a trade is open must be determined prior to entering the trade. So what this means is any management techniques that you use, any adjusting your stop loss to break even, any um, adding to your position, any take profiting, any management and adjustments you make to a live trade must be determined before you even open the trade. It's very similar to how I say your targets and stop losses need to be determined before you enter a trade. This is the exact same thing. And how we manage them is entirely dependent on a plan of action that we take and have in place before we even open the trade. So this is a very, very important concept and something that not everybody follows. It has a big, big part to do with the high failure rate and the reason 90 to 95% of traders don't succeed in this business. So what this does having a plan before we enter a trade is it enables us to filter and control our emotions once we are in a live trade and money is on the line your emotions will destroy you every single way possible in every way possible so to control and limit our emotions and our flaws as human beings acting psychologically and emotionally to events is we need to have a plan of action in place and we simply like a pilot follows a checklist with things to do on a flight before during and after we need to program ourselves to be like that as traders we need to follow a checklist follow a plan and as emotionless as possible follow through with our checklist so our checklist for managing a trade is going to be to have already determined before we enter a trade at what price level we take our profits at what price level we take our stop loss at what price level we maybe we have a, a management strategy in there where we adjust stop loss to break even maybe we have a point in there where when price hits X level we add another half a position to the trade um, whatever these rules are and whatever this management technique you use is, it must be determined prior to entering a trade. Otherwise, your emotions are going to take over, your emotions are going to control the trade, and you're going to make decisions that you're going to go back on and look at and be like, why did I do that? If I didn't do X, I would have made this would have been a winner. If I didn't adjust my stop loss to break even, it would have been a winner. If I didn't uh, add to the position, I wouldn't have lost three times as much as I did. Um, these are all things that you can avoid by simply having a plan and making sure that you follow it once you are live in a trade. The other part to this, as I've already touched on, is that your trade management should be nothing more than following a checklist and a plan. It should be simple. It should be boring. It should be emotionless. That is how you know you've done it right, and that is how you know you've um, properly formulated a strategy and are following it. Managing a trade should not be a thrill, should not be... Uh, an adrenaline rush it should be a simple plan of action that you follow every single time or maybe it, it varies depending on what's going on in the news or what trade you're in strategy you're executing but it should be something that you have on paper that you know exactly what you're gonna do when and you have a plan of action if X happens I do Y and so on so that is a very 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 critical part of managing a trade it is something that must be done and if it's not pre-planned if it's not a structured um, easy to follow checklist that you know what you're doing you're going to make mistakes your emotions fear greed and everything else is going to take over and you're going to lose i promise you the best trader the strongest emotional person in the world is going to be a better trader with this and is ultimately going to fail if they don't follow a plan of action and have a set uh train of thought and path to follow every single time you ever open a live trade with that being said there are two different types of uh, trade management styles to follow there is a passive trade management and an active trade management 
And essentially the difference between the two of these is how um, involved you're going to be, how much time you have to watch your trades when they're open, how busy your schedule is, how many kids you have at home, how many jobs you have, um, what sessions you're trading, all of this. So this is where it has to become personalized on an individual basis. This is where you have to figure out what works best for you, what you're going to be able to fit in your lifestyle, what you're going to fit in your personality, and what you're going to enjoy doing the most. Because um, at the end of the day, you are the only one trading, and you are the only one following this plan, executing these trades, creating this plan, so it has to fit you, right? So the first style is passive management. Passive management is going to be more so for the um, part-time traders, which, you know, is a majority of traders, but the ones that have uh, less free time, more stuff going on in their personal life, or they can't access a phone or computer for certain hours a day because they're at work and they don't have the ability to, um, this style is going to be for you. It's essentially our set it and forget it. It's a really good practice for um, emotions and being able to just walk away from the chart and let your trade play out and not get involved. If you find yourself too emotionally attached to trades and adjusting things when you shouldn't be too often, I suggest you try to inco incorporate a passive management strategy into your trading to get you out of the picture and your emotions out of the equation as often as possible. Um, this is where you predetermine a stop loss, you predetermine a target, you open the trade and you just let it go. Price hits your target or price hits your stop loss. Either way, you let it ride out and you don't get involved, you don't adjust anything, you don't uh, take half positions off. You don't move your stop to break. You don't do any of those things. You just let it play out. The other management style is active management. This is going to be your manual adjusting. This is going to be using a trailing stop, um, adjusting your stop to break even, adjusting your stop to half the distance, adjusting your stop into profit, taking half your profits off the table, um, adding a second position once you go X amount of price. These types of things active management is good for and is what you should be using um, you know if you're trading on smaller time frames and moves are happening faster and you're there to watch it uh, when you have more free time when you want to trade in the direction of the trend and catch longer bigger trending moves um, that is when you're going to want to use this strategy not that either one is any better than the other but active management does allow a little bit more flexibility and ability to have bigger wins than passive management does um, I use a combination of both, so I'll use passive management strategies, and then at times when the first take profits hit, I'll only have half the position taken off, and then I'll manually actively manage the second half of the position, adjusting a stop loss, take profit. Um, I'll also have a passive management trade out, but then I'll come in and actively manage it if it is around a news event. So if I have a major news event on one of the pairs come on one of the currencies in the pair coming up, I will actively adjust my stop loss either to break even to protect myself from unnecessary losses, or maybe I'll lock in some of my profits. Um, I'll never make my stop loss wider ever, 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 and I highly recommend no one ever does that. Um, but I will come in and uh, I have it all predetermined. It's a plan. If if my trade is running still and there's a major news event, if I'm in profit, it has to be a certain amount, then I'll lock some profits. If it's not a certain amount, then I'll just move to break even, but I will be actively managing it. And if I'm not in profit, I'll just close my trade out and get flat prior to the news event because it's not worth the risk, right? So um, a combination of the two is great. You can use, okay, when I'm not at work and I'm home, I'll use active management and I'll do X, Y, and Z. If it is a trade that I place while I go to sleep or while I'm at work, I will have a passive management style in place for that trade and let the, the stop loss and take profits play out. Um, adjusting stop loss to break even. This is another topic that I do want to cover. Um, I'll make a more in-depth video on it down the line, but it is something I do want to touch on here. Um, so one question I get asked more often not than any is, when adjusting a stop loss to break even, um, when do I do it? Should I do it at all? Um, I've been adjusting my stop loss to break even and noticing I get stopped out and my trade ends up being a winner. Or I don't adjust my stop to break even, it goes into profits and then it turns around all the way against me and then I end up with a loss when it was a, losing, when it was a winning trade. Um, I've heard it all, I've seen it all, I've done it all. And my recommendation to you is that there is no answer as to whether you should adjust your stop loss to break even or not unless you have a strategy you've tested. Every individual should, is going to be different. This is why I tell you guys you need to plan, you need to journal, you need to back test, and you need to 
analyze all your trades. And what I do recommend that you do and what you need to do is trade a certain strategy over X amount of trades and develop a sample size. On that sample size, let's say you start off because you want to protect your capital. You start off adjusting your stop loss to break even, right? My recommendation for that would be a one-to-one -one move is when you adjust your stop loss to break even. And what that means is if you are trading and you have a 30 pip stop loss, you adjust your break even, your stop loss to break even when price moves in your favor 30 pips, right? So a one-to-one -one move of the size of your stop loss is when I would adjust to break even. Do that over 100 trades. You'll have 15 break evens, hypothetically speaking. Go through your break even trades and you must be analyzing and journaling good because you need to know if you didn't adjust that stop to break even, what would have happened? So of those 15 break even trades, 10 of them would have been winners, five of them would have been losers. That shows you right there, your strategy would work better if you didn't adjust your stop to break even. Now you might have had the opposite. You might have realized that 10 of your trades, if your break even wasn't in place, would have been losers and only five would have been winners. What does that tell you? You want to be adjusting your stop to break even because even though you're not winning on those trades, you're not losing. You're protecting your capital and you would have lost more than you would have won if the break even wasn't there. So you need to test it. You need to figure it out. You need to put in the work. Everybody wants to go and find the answer from somebody else and get the answer to everything and not have to do anything. I understand that. I wish life was that way too. Um, unfortunately, it's not. You need to put in the work. You need to put in the time. You need to put in the effort. You need to put in the um, hours and you need to figure things out. And one of these things you need to figure out is your management of your trades and when or if you should adjust your stop to break even. That is only going to be figured out by having a set plan, following it, documenting it, and analyzing it. So um, this I, I'm giving you the guidelines on how to do it. It's now just up to you to do it. Um, I've tested all my strategies. I've documented, I've journaled, and I've analyzed, and I've determined some of my strategies I shouldn't adjust my stop to break even because it's detrimental to me if I do and I should let it play out. But I have some that I noticed over time of testing, price breaks out, triggers me in, goes into profit, but then a lot of the times it'll pull back, retest the breakout and the entry that I put in, and then go into the initial direction and I'm being a winner. And if I adjusted my stop to break even every time, it would come back, stop me out of break even, and then go my direction and I would miss out on winners. And I noticed it was doing it a lot for this particular strategy. So I used no break even on the one. And then the other ones I do use a stop loss to break even. So this is something you need to go out into the field. You need to get dirty. You need to put on some gloves and go out there and uh, start prying away and trying away and figuring out what your strategy requires. But this is what you need to do to determine it. You need to test it, journal it, analyze, and figure it out. Another part of managing trades is taking partial profits. Another thing that I will go into depth further in different de in a different video. My course covers all these topics in deep in detail. Um, but taking partial profits is another thing that you need to test and figure out. If you're a trend trader and you trade in the direction of the trend, breakouts or pullbacks, I recommend you take partial profits because the whole objective of trading trends is to catch big moves. Trending moves are typically larger than counter trending moves. So with that being said, if we're taking small profits every time, we're missing out on the big trending moves, which is the point of being a trend trader. So I recommend you develop some kind of strategy where you take partial profits off the table when a certain price is hit, so you secure profits, but then you let a little part of it trail so that when you get that one in every few trades that ends up being a big winner, you can catch a piece of it and you can let that big winner turn into big profits for you. Um, some strategies, if you're a range trader or a counter trend trader or a scalper, then maybe you don't need to take partial profits. Maybe you just have a set take profit and when price hits it, you're out. That is why, again, you need to test out your strategy and see what works. Take that same sample size of 100 trades. Either start off doing full take profit when it's hit or start off doing partial and, and pick a strategy to trail it, right? Now, over that sample of trades, you'll have let's say 100 trades, let's say you have 50 winners. All those 50 winners, let's say you took profit at the full take profit on all of them. Now you should have gone back and put in a note after the trade took place. If I trailed partial position, it would have been a big winner. Or if I trailed partial position, I would have lost some of the profits on the um, second half 
and I would have made more if I just took the full take profit off the bat, right? And then once you analyze all those over a given amount of trades, you have a clear picture of what your strategy calls for. You'll understand if you need to be just taking all your profits off the table when that first take profits hit, or if you would be making a lot more money if you took half your position off and let the second half go. Or maybe you'd find out that if you added a second position to the trade once your take profit was hit, it was a huge double the profit winner. These are things that you need to try for yourself and need to get out there and test. In my course, yes, I do go over all the different methods that I use and recommend for trailing stops, using a moving average or a trend line or a Fibonacci or ATR or whatever it may be. I give you guys the options and I show you how to do them, but it's up to you to actually test them and figure out what works. So taking partial profits is another um, essential aspect of this that really needs to be tested and determined to know um, what you really call for in your strategy and what really will work when it comes to your style of trading all right guys so that basically wraps up managing an open trade um i know this is a very in-depth topic and it's hard to cover everything in one quick youtube video that's why i'll be uploading multiple videos on multiple different topics in forex um the core fx trading course is really going to be much more of a structured in-depth guide to creating your plan how to go through all these processes how to manage trades properly how to create a strategy that determines what methods you'll be using to manage your trades how to determine where to put your stop loss where to put your take profit how to trail trades all these things this is all in the course i just try to create these free videos for you guys to really help get you to understand these concepts and hopefully apply them to your trading plan and really just start getting you guys to understand how professional traders approach the markets and what really is done um, on the professional trading side of the world to ensure consistent profitability and to develop that profitable strategy that is going to work for you long term and that you've tested proven and used on a consistent basis and managing open trades in this way is really essential to doing that and without having these strategies in place before you open a trade and knowing that they um, are there and following them it's really you're really just blind firing you know you're just wandering around lost um, and you really need to start structuring your plan and your trading um, otherwise you're just going to be all over the place so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave any comments for anything you want me to cover in the future, anything that you think was missing from this video, and I will be sure to include it in the next content I create. Um, stay tuned. There's going to be much more content coming out free down the road. Make sure you check up on the weekly technical analysis videos where I go over my full watch list and the U.S. dollar majors for the week ahead. It's a full in-depth technical analysis breakdown. You'll see how I trade, how I see the markets, how I teach trading. Um, so yeah, be sure to check that out every weekend. Thank you guys very much for the support for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. I hope you're seeing some value in them and getting to see what it looks like from the professional trading side of the world. Uh, thank you guys all again. I uh, Catch you in the next video. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to see the next ones that come out. Like and throw a comment below, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.